Alright, today we're doing something fun. I'm going to model a smooth curved structure in Rhino, take that into my journey to render it using a custom reference image, and then we'll test the new animation tool they just launched. This isn't just a test, I want to see how far we can push this new feature, and whether it's actually useful for architecture work, or just looks cool. Let's get started. Alright, so for our first step, we are going to be designing something interesting here in Rhino that we're going to be later taken to mid journey in order to render it and finally animate it. So let's jump right into it. I'm going to go ahead and pick the polyline first and then head over to a top view. I'm going to be creating this polyline so that we can use it as a reference for the dimensions of our design. I'm going to make sure that the grid snap is turned on so that I can snap to the origin. Now I'll be taking the polyline all the way over here and we can go ahead and type in 20 meters. So our 3D model is going to have 20 meters in length and around six meters in width. Then we can close it like this so we end up with this rectangle. Next, I'm going to be hitting the space bar in order to create a polyline again. And I'm going to go all the way to this corner. And by using the grid snap, I'm going to be creating something like this. So a little bit dynamic. It doesn't have to be perfect because we can now pick the control points and move them like so. Just make sure that the gumball is turned on right here. Now again, we're going to be using a polyline and this time I'll be creating something like this. And we can safely delete this rectangle. Let's also turn off the grid snap and I'm going to pick the control points and start moving them around so that we can refine our design. Now let's jump into the perspective view and what we're going to be doing next is to create a series of curves between these two. For this, I'm going to be using the tween curves command and we always need to make sure to take a look at the command bar because it's actually going to be telling us what to do next. So I'm going to be selecting this curve first and then the end curve next. Make sure that you have only three curves in between these two. Now I'm going to pick this curve and shift its control point on the Z axis, like so. But make sure to leave this control point and this one over here on the construction plane. So just move these three control points. Now let's jump into the other one and I'm gradually going to increase the height of these curves like so. Now this other one, now I'm going to place it roughly at this point. So a little bit lower than the one right next to it. So let's go to this other control point and finally this one over here. So you end up with something like this. Let me just refine this a little bit more. Okay, great. For our next step, we need to create a surface out of these curves, but we are going to be using the sub D tools. Therefore, let's type in sub D loft and I'll grab all of these curves. And in order to have a more precise result here, I'm going to check the adjust shape segments box and we can actually lower the shape segments to end up with something a bit more interesting. Now, in order to add more detail to this geometry, we need to turn it into NURBS. How can we do that? We just need to type in to NURBS. I'm going to turn off the option to delete input object so that it's set as no, and then hit enter. I'm going to move this over here. And why did I do that? Because I want to use the command extract isocurve. And this command actually works with single surfaces such as this one. However, on our sub Ds, we have multiple single surfaces. So it's going to be a little bit complicated for us to apply that command in here. I'm going to go ahead and just delete it. And now I'm going to be grabbing this surface and type in extract ISO curve. Now, if you have the direction set as for example, V, make sure to change it to you. And I'm going to be using this curve in order to define the windows of our architecture. So let me just place this one here and this one right over here. Next, I also want to create some stripes. Again, just to add more detail to this. So I'm going to just click multiple times so that I end up with something like this. I'm now going to select the whole geometry and type in split. I'm going to be splitting this with all of the curves that we created. And I'm going to be selecting all of these surfaces. Once selected, we need to give this some thickness. So offset, SRF, offset surface. Make sure that these arrows are pointing out. So click on flip all. I'm going to now add a thickness of 0.15. And by the way, I'm working with meters and that was way too much, I think. I'm going to be turning this from a shaded view to an arctic view so that we can see this in a better way. However, yes it is, it's a bit too much. Again, offset SRF, flip all, and this time, Let's try something a little more subtle, such as 0 
Alright, looking better. Finally, I'll just create some window frames using the wireframe from this surface. And we can extract it using extract wireframe. Now I'm going to just type in pipe. And as for the radius, we'll use 0 0.02. And the same thing for this other side. So extract wireframe and pipe and enter. There we go. So we end up with something pretty interesting. A very fluid curved design. Now we just need to take this to mid journey. But before we do that, we need a screenshot of this. And for now, I'm looking for a vertical render. So I'm going to jump into the viewport layout and I'll change this to the three viewports option. I'm going to now drag this window over here. So we end up with a vertical format, something around this point. And now we can change this view from top to perspective. And also let's change this to an Arctic mode. This way we can highlight the shadows a little bit better. So I'm going to be picking a semi aerial shot such as this one. And I'll be typing in view capture to file. Make sure that the resolution is set at a minimum of 1500 pixels. And you can increase this resolution by just increasing the scale. So I'm going to be taking it to something around 2.4. Now I end up with a resolution of 2K so that mid journey can actually see the design properly. Let's click on OK. Once you save it somewhere on your PC, you're ready to jump into mid journey. So how can we use mid journey to render our designs? We need to jump into the edit mode and down here, you'll see this option to upload an image. Take the image that we got from Rhino and wait for it to upload. All right, great, here it is. Now let's jump into the retexture tab. Now you need to click on this add images. So I'm going to click on style reference and I'm going to go ahead and select something that I already created in mid journey. So I'm going to be using this one as a reference. And by the way, you can select multiple references like so, but for now, let's just use this one. Quick break. If you're enjoying this video and want to dive deeper into this workflow, check out my Patreon. You'll get access to the Rhino model I'm using here, plus a full mid journey guide I created to help you get the most out of your prompts, including how to create stunning illustrative architectural renders and enhance your work with AI. It's the best way to support the channel and level up your creative process. Links in the description if you want to join. Now back to the tutorial. And at this point, we just need to describe our 3D model. It's a curved architectural design that has simple curves. We can also add the materials that we want on it. For example, wide concrete with glass. And it also helps to point out the perspective that we're using. So this is a semi aerial shot. Once you've got this prompt, let's go into the settings and make sure that the stylization is set as 1000 and then hit the submit retexture. They're looking pretty good. And as you can see, we actually have white concrete with glass. And out of all of these four, I actually like this one best. However, I want a different time of day and also a little bit more of detail on our context. So let me just change the style reference. So I'm going to go all the way down here and I'll probably pick this one now and I'll be deleting the one that we just used. So again, let's retexture it. Okay, we ended up with something like this and I'm going to be changing my prompt a little bit. So probably the word simple is actually not letting us get more interesting results. So I'm going to be deleting it. Also curves, let's delete that one too. And I can add curved fluid architectural design with concrete and glass. And I'll just add arch daily photograph. Again, let's hit the retexture button. And now you can see that I've actually tried many options with all of these images that I've created here in mid journey. So you don't have to just stick to one image that you created before. You can go ahead and create an image from scratch in mid journey and render it on that same style. So let me go with this one now, which has this more metallic look to it. And I'll hit this submit retexture one final time. And as you can see, it's actually following my prompt more than my style reference. So what I'm going to do now is just to delete all of this. So I'm not going to be specifying the material or anything. And now hit enter again. And this way you can see that mid journey is actually following the same materials that we have on the style reference. So the possibilities are actually huge with this. You can also go ahead and lower the stylize to 100, for example. So with the reduction of the stylize parameter, our images are actually following the style reference even more. 
Okay, awesome. So out of all of these, I think I'm going to be sticking with this one that we created in the first round. So now in order to animate it, let's upscale it to the gallery first. So I'm going to be clicking here, upscale to gallery. And as you can see, we have this one pop up on our create tab. So let's go there. I'm going to open it now, right click on it and I'll go into animate and for architecture it's better to go to the manual low motion version. Let's delete all of this prompt and what I want the camera to do now is to orbit around the architecture. So camera orbits around the curved architecture and submit. Again let's go into the create tab and wait for our animation to load. And I just realized that I mistyped architecture so let me just copy this text and retype it again. All right, so let's check what we have in here. Okay, this is looking great, but none of these are actually orbiting around our model. But as you can see, Midjourney is extremely good at maintaining the original image. So what I mean by this is that it's not actually hallucinating anything, it's just keeping the same geometry intact. Another thing that we can do is that instead of going with motion low, we can go into the settings and set it as motion high. So we end up with a more dynamic movement from our camera. And here are the results. Unfortunately, none of these are actually orbiting around the architecture, but this is just the first model from Midjourney for video generation. However, I'm really surprised of how good this looks. So far, no other video generation, for me at least, has really maintained the character of my design so far. That's it for today's experiment. I hope this gave you some ideas on how to explore animations and curved forms using AI and Rhino. If you want to download the Rhino model I used or access the custom Midjourney guide I created, you can find both on my Patreon. The link's in the description. And if you're enjoying this kind of content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.